Destiny Preparation Church. Can y'all help me? Put your hands together. Come on. Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you back with us again this week. What an exciting time it is. We prepare for Christmas, one of the most exciting times of the year. I can almost guarantee you for every child out there, this is the most exciting time of the year. Everybody's getting excited about the presents, about things coming up under the trees, about what they're going to get. And, you know, it's important for us to realize that it's not just about what we're going to get. It's about what we've already gotten. God blessed us so much in giving us uh, the greatest present we could ever have. His son, a way of salvation, a way so that we would have hope beyond just these days and these years. And I know when you're younger, it's hard to think about all that. All I'm thinking about is what I see in front of the tree. But as you get older, we start realizing more and more there needs to be more than just this, more than the things, more than the time, more than the situations, because sooner or later, we're all going to go to a different place. And you start thinking about that a little bit more. Perhaps you've thought about that and you need to make some preparations. Well, that's why we have Destiny Preparation Church here to help you not only for today, but also to prepare for where you're going to be in the future as well. God prepared a way. He sent his son as a present, as a gift for you and me. And that's what we're celebrating right now in this Christmas season. I want to encourage you, make sure you take time and make time so that you don't forget what it's all about. Jesus is truly the reason for the season. Listen, I want to invite you to come and join us in any of our services over these holiday times, these holiday weeks. We're getting close. Christmas is just a little over a week away, but you can join us this weekend in service on Sundays at at, uh, uh, 10.30 a.m. for our uh, Sunday school, followed by our morning worship service at 11 a.m. And coming up just another week away, a very special occasion, we're having a special Christmas program Program. We're joining together with Greece Baptist Church, and we're going to be having a combined musical service here on Sunday the 23rd. You are invited to come and join us for this service. I want you to come and be a part of it. So make sure you, 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 you set some time aside. Make sure you make your plans, hold the date, and come and join us. And listen, you don't even have to wait just for that. You can join us at any of our services here on Sunday or on Wednesday as we celebrate God throughout this time. Listen, I want to take you back now to uh, uh, some a sermon that I started, uh, a series I started uh, a few weeks ago. It's been going on now for a few different weeks, and it continues on with part number four. This, the series is Seven Secrets of Success. I want you to understand that God is desires for you to be successful in life. He created you with a plan in mind so that he will be used for something great. And again, as we think about how time goes on in life, we start wondering, you know, am I really meeting my purpose? Am I really going to be successful? Well, you know, success isn't always defined by the things we, things we think it is. But God has something in mind for you. And if you'll follow these seven steps, I believe they will bless you and enable you to be blessed by the Lord, to be used by the Lord. So we're going now to part number four, number four. And I pray that this will be a blessing to you. Stay tuned. Let it bless your life. And don't forget to come and join us in any of our services coming up. Now, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. I want to take you to the fourth point today. This is point number four. This is a new one. Number four is be willing to take action. I told you and I've been telling you that you need to trust in God. You need to be in the right place. You need to give over to God. However, there comes a time when it's time for you to take action. 
There's a time to wait. There's a time to watch. There's a time to get in alignment. But there comes a time when you got to stop standing still and get to stepping. You need to take your hand and put it to the plow. You need to go in a direction. And some of us never achieve anything because of the fact we're afraid to do anything. And therefore we stay stifled in one place, one position, one career, one, 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 uh, one relationship, afraid to make any movements anywhere else. You find people that are in relationships and the relationship is bad and it was wrong and the person is persecuting and abusing them and they've been in all kind of situations. They should have never been there in the first place. And they're afraid to leave that bad relationship because they're afraid of going into anything different. Find people who connect up with folks, sleeping together, living together. It's bad, it's wrong, they know it's wrong in every sense of the word. It's bad by definition, it's bad by the relationship, but won't leave. Stifled in a position, there comes a time when you have to be willing to take action. Look, everybody say this, repeat this after me. You won't achieve anything if you don't do anything. You won't achieve anything if you don't do anything. Nothing's going to get done. Remember the parable of the, 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 of, of the, uh, of the, the talents in the book of Matthew, I believe chapter 14 or 24, one or the other. It talks about the three men who received talents from, from their Lord. There's, and they, they were supposed to take these talents or these this pieces of money and they were supposed to take them and invest a return on them so that when the Lord came back, they would have something to show for the talents they have. How many of you realize that you all have talents? According to that scripture, all have different levels, but you all have gifts and talents. There's something in you that you have that can be poured out. Most of us make money in some form or fashion are living off of our talents particularly when you have a career, your intelligence, your artistic abilities, your strength, your ability to understand certain applications, whatever the case is, you do things that you're good at because you have a talent in that area. It may be administrative, you may be able to organize, you may be able to structure, you may be able to lead or manage. Whatever the case may be, your talents come forth and you pay for them. They bring a return into your life. God puts things in us that we're able to pour out and receive a return. But out of those three, there was one man who said, you know what, I only got this one thing, and I'm afraid that if I risk it, uh, I'm going to lose it, so I'm not going to do anything with it. So when the Lord came back, the one who had the most talent said, Lord, I have what you gave me, and I have increased from it because I've invested it, I've seeded it, and here's a return. The second one said, okay, you gave me a few less than that one, but I used all the ones I had. Amen, praise God, we don't have, all have to have them all, but whatever we got, we can use. He used the ones he had, he got a return from that. He had something to show for himself. The third one said, you know, I, 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 I was afraid, I, I didn't, I, so I didn't do anything with it. So he came back and he had exactly what he had, and no more. And the Lord was, was disappointed with him. Because he had done nothing, he had achieved nothing. God doesn't intend for us to achieve nothing. He intends for us to use what he puts in us, amen, to his glory. It doesn't have to be as sensational as everybody else. It doesn't have to be visible. It doesn't have to be that strong or powerful like we might think of it. But whatever it is that God's put into us, he's given us a purpose for it. He's designed into you your purpose and your destiny. And it's up for, to us to walk in that purpose and in that destiny. The scripture tells us, amen, in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 12, about the body. We're all members of one body. And it goes on to say, you know, every member is not an eye. Every member is not an ear. Every member can't be the same thing. And it says even the smallest, least members, less visible members of the body are, are, are that much more important. And many times they're protected even more because they're subject to damage if they are exposed. How many of you realize how much pain you can have if you hurt your little toe? Well, <laughs> it's a small member. We don't think about it a whole lot. But hit it against something and see if you think about it there. Hey Amen? We don't have to have the same purpose, but we all have a purpose. Somebody say, I have a purpose. 
understand we have a purpose. There is something in us that God wants to use us for. But it's important for us to understand that we have to begin at the right time, at the right place. There comes a time to step out. Isaiah 6 and 8, the story of Isaiah as he reached, as he's brought into the throne room of God. And in that story, he is first of all purged, he is cleansed. But then in verse 8, he says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Now the interesting thing about that story is we read it, verse 1 through 8, or 3 through 8, it says the first thing that needed to happen was he had to be purged. He went into the kingdom of, he went into the presence of God, and the first thing that happened is all of his sin was revealed, how impure he was. Anytime we enter the presence of God, it exposes everything wrong about us. We can look okay looking at the person next to us. I can look relative to you, I can look not, not so bad. I, I can think some good thing. I'm, it's about myself. I can always find somebody that's worth doing worse than I am. Amen? So relatively speaking, I, I mean, I look so bad. But when you get in front of God, you get the perfect example, the perfect identity. And then all of a sudden, no matter how good you thought you were, you see all the bad reflecting off of you. The first thing that happens is he realizes, man, I'm a whole wretched man. And he says, I'm undone. In other words, I've been exposed. Everything about me that's not right has been revealed. And so the first thing that happens is he has to be cleansed. The next thing. The Bible says that a coal came and was put on his lips, and when it put on his lips, he was cleansed, he was purged. Now that he was purged, that's the repentance piece. Now that he's purged, now he can be used. When the call comes out, who shall I send? He's no longer afraid or ashamed to stand up and say, God, here I am send me. Once we have been purged, once we have given our life to God, once we are in alignment with Jesus, now we can say, Lord, I'm ready. I can be used now. I wasn't really ready before. I wasn't in position. I wasn't in condition. But now, here am I, Lord. I'm ready. You can send me. So now he's ready to begin to move out, and now we're ready to begin to move out. I want you to understand there comes a time when we have to do this investment. There has to be a seed planted for something to begin to grow. There has to be something that we put out there for something to come back. A farmer does not expect a return until he first plants a seed. So in the work that God would have to do through us, there comes a time when you need to begin to invest a seed into the work that God now shows you to do. Think about what we've said. you got to be on godly principles. You have to be able to trust in something bigger than you. But there comes a time now when I'm established, I'm in the right place, I'm in the right time. God is in control and he's telling me and he's declaring something. So now I have to be bold enough to step out, to launch out in the thing that God is giving me to do. Many of us receive great ideas imaginative ideas of things that we should do. Start a business, launch a career. I can do differently than this. I want to go back to school to be this. I want to step into a new job position. We have ideas, but we, call, we hold back on investing into those ideas. I used to, I used to, to, um, to m mentor people in my Kodak, and what we would always focus on is what do you want to be and once you know what you want to be, now you can start working on a plan to get there. If you don't know what you want to be, what are you planning for? You're just shooting darts anywhere. You need to have something to go after, and then once you have it, then you can begin to walk that path. Once God begins to give us an understanding of what we're to be, what we're to do, then you have to start taking some steps, or you never get there. So there comes a time when you have to plant that first seed. You know the difference between people who are ultimately successful and launch new businesses and do different things versus those who don't? What they have in common typically is all of us have great ideas. Difference is the ones that are successful and achieve are the ones that took the initiative to do something about it. Most of us won't. I got a great idea, didn't do anything. And then how many of y'all had those great ideas and then after a little bit of time you turn around somebody else is doing exactly what you had in mind? I thought of that first. I thought about, I was going to do that. You didn't do it. Somebody else did. You have to have a mindset to plant 
a seed to invest, to launch along the path that God is instructing you to do. And if you don't have enough faith to plant a seed, then you'll never see a return. Amen. We talk about giving and seed faith giving. And seed faith giving is about, Lord, I believe that you can do great things. And I'm, I'm launching, I'm trusting this in your hand to launch, to initiate. We talked about earlier first fruits. When you give to God out of the first that you have, you're saying, God, I thank you and I trust this into your hands because I know there's even more that's going to come after it. There are times when you have to launch out. If you want a new career, you may need to go back to school and either you're going to do it or you're going to talk about it for the rest of your life. You ever seen somebody just talks about the rest of life? I could have been, I could have done, I would have, I would have been great at, I should have. You know, those are people that didn't take the step. There comes a time you have to take the step. If you want to do that, be that, if that's what God's put in your heart, you're going to have to take the step. Tell somebody real quick, say, stop talking about it and do it. Come on, tell them like they need to hear it. Stop talking about it and do it. Oh, y'all so shy, y'all so quiet. Amen. Somebody needs to hear it. Stop talking about it and do it. A couple things that cause us, that hinder us, and I think you'll find some of them familiar, that hinder us from taking that first step, that, that action. Number one is fear. Fear will cause us to stop, to hinder from doing what we should be doing. Faith and fear cannot work together. The things that we do under God have to happen in faith. But fear will cause us to, to be hindered. Fear, in fact, will bind up the power of faith. Fear will cause the situation to be bound up. And so a lot of times we would have done it, we could have done it, we could have achieved it, but we got afraid. And because we were afraid, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't go anywhere with it. Faith needs to be in an atmosphere that's beyond fear. That's why sometimes you, gotta, you can't tell everybody and deal with everybody in the stuff you're about to do. Because their fear will, fear will rub off on you. They'll have you afraid of it. Have you doubting? Have you questioning? So, uh, sometimes you need to keep some things to yourself. Fear will bind up the power of faith. You cannot be afraid. You cannot be hurt. You cannot be, you can be, you can be all these things, disappointed, hurt. You can be, have difficulties going on, but yet still believe in what's going on. In other words, it, it, being hurt is not an excuse for going forward. Because a lot of us get hurt. A lot of us have disappointment. Some people, we get disappointed in certain things. And we say, I'll never go to try that again. Mm -hmm. No, that, was, that went so bad. I will never speak of that one again. But you know what? Sometimes, even after being hurt, even after, even after disappointments, you have to get back up and go again. Just because it didn't work today doesn't mean it's not the right thing. I call that courageous. Courageous is when you can know that you're going through something, when you know that it's painful, you know that it's difficult, but you know what? Instead of quitting like everybody else, you stand up and you keep going. Amen. Saw a movie a few weeks ago, amen, for the first time, the newest Karate Kid. Watched that movie, I was checking it out, you know, and gets near the end, you know, you know everything's gonna happen if you saw the old one, you want, you know, where it's going. You get to that final battle and fight, and now here they are, and this guy is fighting, the young, little young kid is fighting this big, experienced karate kid who really wants to hurt him at this point. And he hurts him, he intentionally hurts him, he puts him down to the mat, nearly breaks his leg, puts him down to the mat. And this young kid is down there, and he is hurt. And the thing that struck me was he was down there hurt. I mean, tears coming out of his eyes, painful. And I'm feeling that dude is in pain right now. But he gets, he, he, he looks up and he looks him in the eye and he has this look in his eyes. And the thing that really struck me is that when he got up, it wasn't that he was getting up and the pain was gone. In fact, it looked like as he was getting up, he was really afraid because he knew this boy wanted to hurt him if he had to to win. But he still got up. In pain, in the middle of fear, he still got up. And that's what it means to be courageous. 
There are times when you do the things that you're doing for God. It's not always about doing it just when it feels good, when everything is going right and everything is wonderful. There are times you're going to be in pain, but you still have to go forward. You are, have had hurts and disappointments in life, but you know what? That is not your indication to stop. You still have to get back up. You may not even know exactly what's going to happen when you get back up, but you still have to get back up. Do not let fear hinder you. Oh, but I had a bad experience before. It hurt the last time I went through this. The last time there are problems. Sometimes the memories of the past will stifle you so that you won't do anything. And here you stand and nothing happens because you won't move. You cannot allow things to stop you from taking action. Number four, there comes a time when you have to be willing to take action. You can't have fear in your life. No fear. You can't be afraid of failure. You can't be afraid of being wrong. Some of us won't move on things because we're afraid, what if I'm wrong? What if it really wasn't God? What if it really, what if, what if I'm making a mistake? What if, no, I don't know. And the devil, by the way, anytime you hear something from God, the first thing he does is question you as to whether it really was from God. From day one, that's what he did with Eve. They got the word from God, don't eat of the tree. What is his first response to them? Did God really say don't eat at the tree. Are you sure that's what he said? God will say to you, you'll hear a word from God. You need to go do this. You need to go pray, pray for this. You need to go lay hands on this person. And the devil comes and say, really? You sure that's God? That, you sure that, you're just crazy. You need to sit back. And we go. Right? God speaks to you to do something. And you say, yeah, I know I heard from God. And you start heading that direction. The devil says, no, you don't want to do that. What's the matter with you? You're not even good enough to do that. What do you think? What were you thinking? And you go. We get stifled because of fear of being wrong. What if what I heard wasn't from God? Let me tell you, what's the worst thing that happens if it was? What's the worst thing that happens if it was? You launch out. Things don't go exactly as you planned. You never even know how in the midst of things not working the way you expected them to, if it was God. Because just because it didn't happen the way you expected to doesn't mean that it wasn't God. So you've got to learn how to walk by faith, not by fear. Fear cannot intimidate you. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. 1 John 4 and 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love, trusting God, casteth out fear. Listen, because fear hath torment. Fear hath torment. Fear will torment you to the point where you will quit. You will give up. You become so afraid that you can't even move anymore. You become stifled because of your fears. Many times your fears are fears of the past. What happened before? What happened last time? You cannot be held back by your fears. There comes a time when you have to take action. Second thing is risk mistakes. You can't allow mistakes of the past to cause you not to move into the future. Don't let your mistakes destroy you. Okay, you got it wrong. You did the wrong thing. You moved outside of God's grace. You made the mistake and you tried it yourself and it didn't go well. You may have made some mistakes that have changed your life. I blew it. And here I am carrying my mistake. It's on my back now. I can't get rid of it. But don't let your mistakes be an excuse not to go forward from God, for God. Listen, all men and women, all of us make mistakes, all of us. But great men and great women rise from their mistakes. You gotta learn how to go forward, even from the mistakes you made in your life. If it wasn't the right thing to do, that's all right. You still got to go forward. Just because there are people who feel like they can't come back to church because they went to church and they, they messed up and they fell out and now they're embarrassed to come back. Listen, that's no reason not to come back again. Just because you made a mistake, just because you failed, just because you sinned is no reason that you cannot come back to God again. 
Just because something went wrong, just because it didn't happen the way you wanted to, does not mean that you should quit. You need to come back around. Don't let your bad experiences hinder you or change your outlook. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, talks about the faithfulness of God. Now, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, will keep, which keepeth covenant, and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He's a faithful God that keeps his covenants. Listen, God will be there. He's faithful to you. You may have made a mistake. You may have made a wrong direction. God is faithful. He hasn't changed his mind. He hasn't quit on you. He's there for you. Be faithful to God. He'll be faithful to you. Listen, if you want to be successful, if you want to see success in your life, comes a time when you have to become bold enough to take action. You have to be confident enough in the God that you serve that if you're trusting in Him and if you're on His principles and His foundations and God is speaking to you and the thing that you're hearing is something that is in line with God's will, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to figure it all out. But you've got to be bold enough to trust. Noah had never made an ark before in his life, but he had to be trusting enough in God to start building. You never start building, you never get anything done. This program is being provided by Destiny Preparation Church. We'd like to invite you to join us in any of our services. If you're looking to better understand God's purpose for your life, if you'd like to experience the true presence of God, or you're in need of a church home, join us at Destiny Preparation Church. For more information about our services, ministry, or church family, see our website at destinypreparation.org or call 720-5426. Join us on the road to your destiny.